Hey, it's Dan, welcome back. You're watching I Allegedly. And I've got a good one for you today. We are in Hollywood, California. And uh, I am in front of the TCL Chinese Theater. And uh, we're gonna take a look at Hollywood. We're gonna take a look at the good and the bad. Uh, a lot of retail is absolutely destroyed down here. There's a tremendous amount of homeless people down here. The tourists are back out, which is nice. But I want to show this to you guys because there's a few blocks that are pretty good. There's a lot of areas that are bad. Uh, please take a second to like the video. Please hit the subscribe button. Uh, show this with all your friends and colleagues. We do a lot of financial and uh, news, national news, but uh, Hollywood of old is gone, guys. I'll tell you that. And I'm really surprised at what I've seen so far. And I can't wait to show you guys everything. They've got certain things blocked off. Certain things are closed. Uh, but uh, I think you're going to enjoy it. So let's let's get into it. How would you like to get a job working for Tesla? You can. They're hiring right now. Uh, P.T. Barnum, I mean, Elon Musk has announced that uh, they are hiring self-driving car testers to test the new Autonomous 5 system. And uh, Elon Musk has described the program as mind-boggling. He says it's absolutely amazing, but they want to try to have the uh, autonomous self-driving cars put through several different scenarios. You can be a Tesla owner. You cannot be a Tesla owner. They will give you a car. They're putting people through different scenarios on trips, mountain driving, a little bit of everything. I still love the video that made the rounds a couple years ago where the woman fell asleep and, and ran into somebody. I, I don't know why I thought that was funny, but uh, I just did because she was asleep. But uh, anyways, Elon Musk is hiring and you can work at Tesla. And if that interests you, by all means, go do it. But, you know, as we start our journey out here, there's a few people out here. Now this right here, is near Hollywood and Highland that you've heard so much about with the Oscars and all that stuff. And you got uh, Ghirardelli's across the street. You got the El Capitan Theater that's showing uh, Cruella right now. You got Jimmy Kimmel Live right there. But uh, again, sunny day, beautiful. People are out shopping. And uh, a couple blocks are nice. Once we get away from this, it is nothing short of hell, guys. So. Let's get into it. This is complete carnage up here. You've got all this retail that's completely destroyed, like this stuff behind me. And uh, theater's done, business is done, people sitting and sleeping on the streets, it's crazy. So you've got all this done. Look at this. People screaming. Welcome to Hollywood. There's a story out of uh, San Francisco and that last week we covered the Louis Vuitton store, how busy it was uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, how they had tape up in a lineup. By the way, guys, look at everything. It's open and closed behind me, it's crazy. But the Louis Vuitton store in San Francisco at the Stanford Center, uh, shopping center, has got a real problem. They had a swarm of robbers that came in and swarmed the stores and uh, in the area and stole $100,000 worth of bags. Um, one of the workers there said, you know, I don't want to do this. I don't want to work in this store. Even though we have security, it's not safe. But they stole $100,000 worth of bags. Okay, swarmed it, took over the store, you know, basically swarmed them, did a strong arm robbery and took everything. This is what you have to look forward to is things like that and carnage like that uh, in the coming uh, months. So it's just not safe. Got areas that, uh, you know, completely closed down up here. Look at this. Got more stuff behind me. Just completely done. I mean, it's just retail carnage behind me. 
Uh, one thing that's happening with the ridiculous stock market is you've got all these companies are being shorted now. And uh, these are not particularly good companies. You know, AMC, I think, is a joke. Uh, GameStop, I think, is ridiculous as far as uh, the future of video games. And they're trying to convince everybody that they're going to turn the company around because their stock's $500 a share or whatever the heck it is uh, today. But that being said, you know, there's a new one. Wendy's. Wendy's, the hamburger chain, has been shorted a ton. Uh, you've got uh, Petco. Petco has got over 108% of their stock being shorted on a daily basis right now uh, with their float. So it's a good short candidate. Uh, you've got a company called ThreadUp. You've got another one called Workhorse. Pubmatic is another one. And Clover. These are the hot five stocks to short right now. It doesn't mean that they're good companies. It doesn't mean anything right now, which which in this ridiculous, insane market, it doesn't make a bit of difference. Uh, even if a company's bad, you know, you can make a ton of money shorting these things. I'm not giving you guys financial advice by any means, but what I am giving you is uh, how preposterous it is that these people are shorting these things on a daily basis. And let's just keep walking by the carnage here. Look at this, guys. Whole block is done. Welcome to Hollywood. Look at this, guys. Location after location after location. You know? You get three or four closed, one open, three or four closed. The famed Hollywood suit outlet. You know? Three suits for 199 bucks. They're still here. Okay, I am with the one and only ambassador of Hollywood, okay? And uh, he's been telling me different things about the economy and things of, uh, of scale here that are, that are improving down here, believe it or not. And uh, so please tell me, so again, La La Land behind us. La La Land, which is affiliated with Souvenirs of Hollywood and the other, uh, the, fa the famous Souvenirs of Hollywood. And, and there's one more on the corner. And they just loaded their new, the, the um, Elvis Presley Cadillac after a whole year during the rights, protests, whatever you want to they call it. They got it out of there, right? Yeah, and now it's back today. And it's good news in the economy. I'm a tour guide as well, and I sell tours when I'm loading. I've never <laughs> sold so many tours. It's like the roaring 20s. So it's and coming back. It's coming back. And a I lot of retail, way, man. I'm very optimistic, I'm telling you. Yeah, this is the time. We've seen a lot of retail close down here in this video. But the ambassador thinks it's coming back. And it is. Also, I you know, see it. the other thing I want to ask us, let's talk about the homeless problem. Let's talk yeah. about, you know, uh, leaders, you know, that we need somebody in the governor's office. We need somebody for mayor of Los Angeles. Yes. I live in Orange County yeah. and I'm up here, but but man, it just it's a problem. These people need help and and they need services and they need they need a way out of this. But but you know, Venice Beach, I just I just saw you in the news the other yeah. day with yeah. Venice Beach. Yes. And what do you think we need to do next? Well, okay, Sheriff Villanueva. He Villanueva, yeah. Yeah, Villanueva. He did a great thing. He went down there, um, and he wants to give them mental counsel. He wasn't there to, with, you know, just grabbing. Yeah, him. with a stick, but he really no. wants to improve it. Exactly. He, he, he says, basically, he thinks this is an open territory for people around the country. They want to get just live on Venice Beach and camp out and get free services. No. And then also the fact um, I went down there to endorse Mitchell Farrell right here. He's right there because uh, I think what he did in Echo Park it was tough love, but he but had he cleaned somebody it up had quite to a do bit. it and he helped them. I drove Whether by it today. Like it. it was nice, you know. Yeah, it really... it, it's like it was when I was a child. I'm 61. I remember that you could go out to the park, Echo Park, at and night. hang out. And, and now it's come back. Yeah. They have cameras and they have security, and well, that's it's great. Wonderful. That's great. That's so. great, Ambassador. Well, good luck to you. Okay, I yes. hope it comes around. I really appreciate everything, and uh, and thanks for your time. Today. I really enjoyed talking. And to you. Give the, so when you come to Hollywood, I'll say to you, welcome to Hollywood. You have a ride. You have a ride. All right. Thank you, Ambassador. Tommy's Hamburgers right outside. Look at all these people still living here. Absolutely insane.
absolutely crazy. There's another one closed behind me. Here's some more horrible news today. The consumer price index came out today and uh, it's at 5%. Uh, does that seem like a lot, Dan? Yeah, it is. Last time, uh, it hasn't been this high since uh, Bill Clinton was in office. Uh, anyways, uh, bad thing about this is that inflation, they estimate, is only at 5% with CPI. But, you know, you're out shopping. Things have gone up. Meat's gone up uh, over 40% in some markets for some items. Uh, you've got lumber that's gone up over 100%. I've had people correct me over and over on that one. And uh, here's the worst part about this, is that when you look at wages over the last five years, wages have gone down 2.8% in the last five years. So as wages go down and inflation goes up, it's destroying everything. And, uh, and then we get more good news today, and that's only that 367,000 people filed for first-time unemployment. And uh, guys, you can't make this stuff up. Stock market's up, everything's great. I'm on Coanga right now and I wanted to cut through traffic real quick. Here's a story out of CNBC as I just walked by all this stuff that's closed. And it's a story of, from uh, Stanley uh, Druckenmiller. Mr. Druckenmiller is a hedge fund pioneer who has said that he's very concerned that people are not uh, looking at the warning signs in the marketplace. Uh, they're not looking at conventional risks. Why should they? They're shorting stocks to the moon and they think that everything's gonna continue just to go up uh, willy-nilly and they don't have a care in the world. So he thinks that this is you know, carnage waiting to happen and that you're going to see businesses shutter just like everything you're seeing here on Hollywood Boulevard. I mean, look at this stuff, guys. It's just, there's another block that's closed, okay? Cannot make this up, guys. See that down there? Okay, it's horrible, okay? But people don't care about that, guys. They don't care about what's real right now. They're, they don't, you know, you gotta get ready. You gotta get ready with your safety. You gotta save some money. You know, a friend of mine calls me. Uh, had an appointment at B of A. Drives over there, they're closed. No notice, no nothing, okay? That was fantastic. Uh, one of the listeners wrote me to go get money out of the bank and she needed $8,000 for a withdrawal. They told her no, they'd give her four. Okay, why don't we write you a check for the rest? Who are you giving the money to? What's this for? Uh, number one, it's none of your business. And number two, uh, they didn't want to hear about that. So you guys are gonna start seeing this, but be prepared because again, Mr. Druckenmiller, you know, he's sitting there saying, this is the time to get ready. I don't know if you guys can see that behind me. That's the Hollywood sign way back there. I'll get a better shot of it in just a second. These people park their cars here. This is like their, their spot. That's like their parking spot. And then they live in these tents. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Trash, debris. See, this is sad. Here you've got New York Pizzeria that was just open a few months ago. Done, down for the count. That's really, really sad. So, speaking of that, you know, there's so many retail establishments that are open that haven't paid rent in 14 months. What are they going to do when they have to pay the piper? I mean, seriously. You know, you know as Jeremiah Babe says, you can extend it for 10 but then there's a problem with that. Here's a story about rental assistance and the logjam that people are having. Again, the rental assistance program has a ton of funding. There are over 370 rental assistance programs in the United States right now. You gotta check in the county that you live in. You know, you gotta, you gotta just research it because they're out there. The problem with it is that a lot of these things, they're starting to change the criteria. 
Uh, they're telling people they're only good for 50% of the rent, which does them nothing. Uh, the very best and first rental assistance program I heard about was in Utah. Uh, they just had a flat fee. Listen, we'll give you $2,000 a month towards your bills. Uh, good luck. We're going to give you a minimum of three months, and you guys could get it. Now, the story out of NPR is showing that people are applying, and they're taking three, four, five months to give these people an answer. And the worst thing about that is that there's a log jam now to get this money approved, and then they're saying, hey, listen, this one guy, Mr. Masada Dodd, this guy, Mr. Masada Dodd, owes 15 grand on his rent, okay? And uh, they said, oh, we'll give you 60%, which doesn't do him any good. He's gonna get evicted. The landlord's already filed paperwork for the eviction, so he's done, okay? Uh, but the guy's gonna get 60% of his rent. So the idea is to keep somebody in their house and make it so that they're not getting kicked out and that they can stay there. And uh, you've got to research these things, ask what they're gonna do. If your landlord's not invested in this, he doesn't want to be involved in it, just go out and apply for it and they'll give the money directly to you. It will happen, okay? A lot of these applications take 10 to 12 pages to fill out. But again, it's all the stuff that you should know. And uh, they're giving this money out, guys. So still, try to get it. Like they said, it's a log jam to get it but try to get it. Living over the freeway overpass. Look at all the trash, look at all the junk. Look at them just walking by. Just people going about their lives, just walking by like it's nothing. But you've got people that have lost everything, living on the streets. They parked their cars out here. They got tents. Another store closed. I'm outside the Pantages, and they've got signs saying that Hamilton's coming back in August. We will see if that's true. You know what's crazy is with all this closures down there, the smell of weed is all over the place down here. I mean, it is crazy. There's the Hollywood Station. You know, it's really sad, man, to see this place. Look at the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Neil Patrick Harris. Gary Cooper. Come on, guys. It's crazy. Mandy Patinkin. It used to be such a romantic place. It's just had so much hope, and I wanted to be down here so much. As some of you may know, I was a former screenwriter, and this is living hell, guys. This is this is this is absolutely a disaster. There's the Hollywood and Vine uh, restaurant, the old Sopranos restaurant, completely finished, done. Imagine traveling all this way, and you just come to carnage. How depressing. <laughs> some things make it, some things don't. We'll do it. Tattoo parlor's done. Hey, coming soon. Theater's finished. You've got Tipsy Tales. The crab, the crawfish house is done. Paloma, which was a nice uh, Italian restaurant, is finito. And uh, the worst thing is that you've got all these places out here, you know, that are just completely done. Full blocks that are completely finished. Awful. Here I'm at Kawanga and Hollywood Boulevard and this coffee place is completely done. Just gonna walk through, you're gonna see all the carnage behind me. But next story is kind of a dual story comes from the New York Times and CNBC, and they're talking about with the Colonial Pipeline and how they recovered all that Bitcoin from that, it means that it that it's, it is traceable, okay? And now there's people talking about uh, the uh, quantum computers, that there are people out there trying to use quantum com uh, computers to hack into Bitcoin wallets. 
So all of you people are saying, hey, it's not possible. The good thing is, is that, you know, I know someone who was given 20 Bitcoin as a gift, as a joke, um, about 10 years ago. It's not a joke now because if, if somebody could use a quantum computer to hack the wallet and figure out what the password was, you know, depending on what day of the week it is, you may have yourself three or 400 grand, 500 grand, 800 grand, whatever it's gonna be, guys. But again, look at all this stuff. So, man, it's just one thing after another. Blocks completely finished down here. Isn't that crazy? It's really sad. Really, really sad. All these poor people that came down here. Coming to Hollywood. Gonna check it out. Look at this. This is Wilcox, guys. Okay? So, it's an absolute mess. Absolute mess. But they're still building. There's a crane there building right now. Got another high rise going in behind us there. Who's gonna live there? Who's gonna rent that place? Oh, don't worry, Dan, it'll be somebody. Somebody's gonna rent it. Okay. Got people sleeping on the streets across the street. Now, speaking of electric cars, uh, there's one thing that's never been acknowledged, and that is that Apple is going to build an electric car. But all signs point to it. They've been adding executives, and with their new campus that just opened, it's really crystal clear that they're gonna be doing that. The latest hire is a man named Ulrich Franz, who ran BMW's electric car division. Now this guy, okay, uh, makes it so that clearly, they, they are not acknowledging this, but clearly they're getting the electric car business. Uh, this guy has got uh, BMW, to the market faster and he knows his stuff and he is considered one of the top guys in the electric car business and now he works at uh, Apple. So it'll just be a matter of time until Apple has an electric car. Here I'm at Las Palmas and uh, you've got people sleeping in the streets. It's pretty bleak. So. You know, Stefano's across the street's got a crowd full of people. A lot of closures down here. Once you get two blocks away from the movie theaters, it's it permeates weed down here, uh, like, like like you've never smelled in your life. And uh, it's just it's just really really sad. It's really a mess down here. Maryland's back. Here you've got closed businesses on the corner of Cherokee. Musso and Franks is done. You got people sleeping on the sidewalk. Here's the Star Diner completely done. And that's Musso and Frank. Finished. It's really sad. Here I am right off of Selma, and you've got tents right in the street. I'm one block off of Highland, and you got people living right in the sidewalk there. Unbelievable. It's incredibly sad to see people live this way. It's awful, you know, it really is. You've got, you've got Hollywood Boulevard, you've got about a two block stretch 
that they're keeping normal. Let's put it that way, okay? Not letting people sleep on the sidewalks, keeping people away from everything. You get, you get a block away from that and it's pandemonium. Okay, now we're gonna go to Sunset. I'm gonna show you Sunset Boulevard, which is one main street up. Ho go Sunset, Hollywood. So I'm gonna show you guys that. I'm gonna walk over there and show you guys utter chaos and mayhem. Here we are in front of the iconic In-N-Out hamburger in Los Angeles, and you've got somebody sleeping on the sidewalk right in front of the place. Unbelievable. This is what it's gotten to. I'm in front of Hollywood High School, and there's been a lot of iconic people that have gone to school here, but when you see what's a block away from this place, you're gonna be completely shocked. Okay, that's all I gotta say, shocked. The days in on sunset, completely closed and boarded up, which is shocking, you know? They're done. Across the street on sunset, you've got division camera that's closed, but you've got a guy sleeping out in front of the place too, on the ground. People just walking by, going about their day like it's no big deal. The Sycamore Tavern's done. Completely out of business. And then you've got homeless people in front of the 7-Eleven just hanging out. You cannot make this up. This is unbelievable. You've got RDB, the custom car manufacturer, one block away, and you've got all these people living right on the sidewalk across from a multi-million dollar business. It's crazy. It's absolutely sad. It's devastating. Cannot make this up, man. Jeremiah Babe and I were here two months ago, and this place has gotten so much worse. Not a little bit. Stepped up five times. Seriously. LA Library's got people sleeping out in front of it. It's crazy, guys. It's absolutely everywhere down here. I mean, this is so incredibly unsafe. It's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Right before your eyes. The world famous RDBs. Got a YouTube channel. Some really expensive cars. Right here on Sunset and Martell. And across the street, you have a homeless encampment. They're filming today. You know, got the Lamborghini wagon. Hey, thanks for joining me today. What an experience, man. This is depressing and sad and, and just absolutely miserable to see a place I love so much completely destroyed. So please don't forget to like the video. Please subscribe to the video. Please share this with all your friends and colleagues. Will you guys travel to Hollywood anytime soon? You know what? This world is becoming a world with, I used to say the have and have nots. It's not it, it's the extreme have and have nots. It's getting much, much worse right before our eyes. Uh, don't forget to take a look at the Patreon channel if that interests you guys. Good luck to each and every one of you. Onward and upward, I will see you guys very soon.